So in today's video, I basically want to talk about layers and how I kind of order them and organize them because I believe this is very important and oftentimes like overlooked by people. So I kind of want to give you a quick introduction on how I personally use layers for when I'm painting on the computer. So on the screen, you can see Clip Studio Paint, which is my favorite app for drawing. So I've used Photoshop in the past. I also used um, Paint to Sci and I use Procreate on the iPad. But I would say overall, I just feel most comfortable working in Clip Studio Paint. Let's just put it like that. So anyway, so over on the left side, uh, on the right side, um, we have the layer panel, which is this thing right here. And so if you're new to digital painting, layers are basically as if you're stacking multiple sheets of paper on top of each other. So that's kind of how you can look at it. And you can do many different things on all of these different sheets of paper without affecting any of the others. So this is kind of like the basic concept behind layers. And then there's also like lots of advanced features when it comes to layers. So you have layer modes, which kind of change how your layers behave. And then you also have um, layer masks, which I'll get into in a separate video because it's kind of more advanced, but layer masks are super powerful and they can kind of enable you to do many things that would be very difficult without them. But for this video, I'm going to keep it simple and I just want to kind of tell you guys or show you how I would order my layers um, just to have a smarter, more efficient workflow. So as I said, over on the right side, we have the layer panel. And you can see all of these different layers. So I believe I have like 15 different layers or so. And it really doesn't matter how many you use. Um, just use as many as you think you may need. So sometimes I only use like five layers. For other paintings, I may use up to 50. So it really doesn't matter how many you use. Just use as many as you need. So whenever you open up a new canvas, you automatically have the one called the background. So if you open up a new um, canvas and clips your paint, this layer will be there automatically. And so the first layer that I created was the layer called sketch. And as you can see, my sketch is very basic. So it's not very detailed, but it holds enough information for me to actually get started with the coloring. And that's basically all that I'm looking for, all that I need in that specific situation. And so the next layer that I created was this layer right here which essentially is just a bunch of flat colors that I've chosen for my image. But the important part that we need to focus on right here is where I placed this layer. So if we look at my layer panel, you can actually see that I started out with the sketch layer, but the layer with the colors is actually below my sketch layer. So I created these two layers right here. One of them is this red layer, which is called above and this blue layer, which is called below. So everything below this blue layer is underneath my sketch. And everything above the red layer, which is titled above, is above the sketch. And this is very important because when you're painting digitally, you should use all of these different options that are, that are available to you to your own advantage. And this is one of them. So let me explain. Let's say you created your sketch as I've done here. And now you want to start coloring your piece. If you were painting on a canvas, you would pick your paints and then just paint right on top of it. But can you see what happens? It actually kind of gets rid of our sketch, which makes sense because we're painting on top of it and it's slowly disappearing, which is totally normal if you're painting traditionally. But what we actually can do digitally is keep our sketch on top, create a new layer, and then drag this one below our sketch and now start coloring. And we're not affecting our sketch. So basically I can pick any color that I want and just paint below my sketch layer without messing up any of my sketch. So I'm basically always on the safe side. I, I can almost never mess up. Because if I decided I didn't like this, I could just simply delete this layer and still have everything else intact because I never touched any other layer. It gives you the option to kind of explore, to experiment, to be bold and brave. Sometimes you have like an idea 
what if I make her hair blue, but you're not sure if it's gonna work out. Well, guess what? You can just simply create a new layer and make the hair blue and then kind of decide, does it look good or not? And if it doesn't look good, you simply just delete that layer and you get to go again. And just as a note on the side, it doesn't matter which app you're using. So if you're using Photoshop, if you're using Paint or Sci or Krita, or maybe even Procreate on the iPad, as long as the app that you're using has layers, you're gonna be able to use all of these features that I'm talking about in your app. You don't need to use Clip Studio Paint to make use of these techniques. So anyways, I created my sketch layer, then I created a new layer, which was this layer right here. And basically this is just a layer with flat colors where I decided what colors I wanna use for my illustration. So I started out with flat colors because that's the simplest way to go about it. So my mindset when I'm painting is the simpler, the better. I like to start as simple as possible and then move on from there and get more complex as I go along. So the next layer is actually me testing out the shading for the first time. So let's just turn it on and see how it looks. All right, so this is the layer that I created after I've chosen the colors. And you can see it still looks pretty terrible, but because I'm working on a new layer, on a separate layer, I'm able to kind of play around with different lighting scenarios. I can kind of experiment. I get to play around with all of these different ideas that I have. And it just gives me the freedom because I'm not scared to mess up. So anyway, so moving forward, now that I've chosen where I want my shadows to be, I wanted to start playing around with the lighting and kind of introduce some, some highlights to my painting. And so I simply created yet another new layer on top of my shading layer. But if you look at the layer panel, everything is still below my sketch. So the sketch is still on top of everything. So the next layer is just simply a layer with lighting. And this is, again, another layer where I get to experiment with different ideas. The next layer that I'm gonna show you is actually above my sketch and you'll see how it starts to come together. It actually starts to kind of create this harmonized painting. So let me just turn on the next layer. And so if I just switch it off and on, just to show you the difference, so off, on off, on. It's really starting to kind of have that finalized look. Her eyes are starting to pop. The skin is getting a little bit softer. The colors are starting to blend and the sketch is slowly disappearing. So if you focus just on her nose, you can see how it's, it's just getting softer, a little bit more realistic and finalized. And the whole image is just feeling way more complete. And so now from here on, it's just about cleaning up the image, adding small details and making it work. Moving forward from here is very easy because we get to kind of relax. We know everything is in place. Everything is where it should be. And now it's just a matter of making the image look kind of finished and just making it look good and pretty. So I'm just gonna turn on the next few layers just to show you how the image progresses from a sketch to something more finalized. So here's a huge jump. I just kind of made her neck a little bit shorter, finalized her hair a little bit, added some more detail and just blended the colors to make everything look a little bit more softer, just a little bit more finished. And so you can see there, there's been like a huge jump in quality. So people always ask me, how do you get rid of the sketch? Well, honestly, I don't. I just paint on top of it. So it's not like I'm deleting the sketch. It's still there. The layer's right here. But I'm painting on top of it. And by painting on top of the sketch, it's naturally going to disappear. It's going to be less visible because there's paint on top of it. So I'm not actually deleting it. I'm just painting. I'm just putting color on top of my sketch so that it slowly disappears and it's not that visible anymore. And so anyway, so moving forward, I'm just gonna show you the next few layers just so you can see how it went from something very basic to something finished and presentable. So here I just added a soft light, a more warm light because I felt like it was pretty um, desaturated. It, it didn't have much life in it. So I added a warmer light, a little bit more yellow to it. With this layer, I just added some more shadow to the left side of the cheek. So you can see the small difference. 
Here I'm just cleaning up the areas around her ears. Adding some more light from the side and kind of rotating her eyes a little bit. So you can see it was very simple. This process wasn't actually that difficult. It's just a matter of being clever with how you use your layers. So have kind of a rough plan. Know what you want out of your illustration and then go in there with a clever approach, you know? So next time when you're watching a speed painting, instead of just watching it, like how the image progresses, actually look at how the artist is using layers and try to imitate that in your next painting. And it's gonna make so much of a difference. And that's actually how I learned quite a lot about Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint. I was just watching these these artists paint and I try to figure out what they were doing. I'm gonna do like separate videos on these specific tools, but I just wanted to show you quickly how I would use layers. And this is how I use layers, I would say like 99% of all times. And um, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. So let me know in the comments if you already knew about this technique, if you kind of use something similar or if this helped you in any way. Also, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber, also make sure to smash the subscribe button. And as always, guys, I love you with all my heart and soul. Peace. <laughs>